welcome back to another episode of Miss Kentucky Proud. We are continuing with our Ag Aspiration series to give you guys an inside look about what it looks like to have a career in the agriculture industry. Well, I'm really excited about today's guest. Uh, Jennifer is fantastic, and I've gotten to work with her all year long as Miss Kentucky, but I won't do all the talking. I will let her go ahead and introduce herself. <laughs> Hello, I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Miss Kentucky, for having me. My name is Jennifer Elwell, and I am the Executive Director of the Kentucky Agriculture and Environment in the Classroom. That's a very long organization title, but we wanted to make sure that uh, we got our mission kind of in what we're called. We like to talk to kids about how important agriculture is and how important the environment is to raising the food that we eat every single day. I actually got the opportunity to work with Jennifer um, and her staff in all of our science experiments that we did on the Mobile Science Activity Center. So if you saw those videos and you liked them, you have Jennifer to thank because she is the rock star behind all of that material. But I'm really curious, Jennifer, could you kind of shed a light on what your education path and career path was that got you into the position that you're in now? I sure can. So if we go way back when I was a kid, <laughs> I grew up on a farm. My mom was horse crazy and that was her dream was to have a farm one day with with horses that she could train and work with. So growing up, you know, I got to be around a lot of animals and I was a 4-H kid and I love that experience. So go, go 4-H. Um, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> and growing up, you know, I never thought that I would work for farmers or be in the food industry, but when it was time to think about what I wanted to do with myself and what would be the easiest on my parents as far as finances goes. Um, of course, my grandparents told me I had to go to U University of Kentucky for a long time because they were huge Wildcat fans. I learned that if you study agriculture and you already had a background with 4-H, and I know FFA is also a huge part of that. I was not lucky enough to have FFA at the high school that I went to, but because of my 4-H experience, I found out that they had a lot of scholarship money uh, to provide to students going into agriculture. And I think that's true still today that there's more scholarship money available than there are kids to take it. So I thought that was a great uh, path, you know, for my, on a financial standpoint that I was gonna check this out and see what kind of opportunities were there for me. Mm -hmm. I started studying animal sciences because I love animals, I loved horses, and it's just really interesting how my path got me to where I am today when looking at, at jobs with the major that I chose. You know, I wasn't exactly sure that I was going to find a career that I was going to be happiest with. So I took some personality tests and went to the career center and come to find out that even though I'm very science minded, I love um, you know analytics and statistics and researching about different science subjects. I'm also a creative person. And when I was in high school, that was probably one of my favorite things to do was, you know, writing um, plays and uh, advertising campaign. You know, we would have different projects where we got to do that kind of stuff. And I remembered that, you know, that's where I really had the most fun uh, when it came to, to working on a project. So I added agricultural communications to my degree where I got to study public relations and journalism, uh, advertising. I had not been on a website or the internet until I got to college because that was a new thing. It was oh the latest. Yeah. It was the latest media that, you know, was the new craze and studying communications, you know, that that was probably a skill that I needed to have. So I took the very first web design class that the University of Kentucky offered. Um, I learned how to lay out newsletters. 
so I got to mix my love of agriculture with the creative side and my love of researching topics and getting to report on those and share that information. And that actually kind of moves into the education world. So really education is about learning things yourself and being able to share that with other people. And I absolutely love my job. I have worked for farmers for over 20 years now in different roles. Uh, I've been a communications director with the Kentucky Corn Growers for the longest time, and I was able to put all of those skills to work for that organization. I talk with both farmers and the public and kids, and I really learned that I loved working with the, the kids side and saw an opportunity, and that's kind of how I have the job I do today. And I have seen how great you are with kids and what an awesome job you do in providing things that are exciting and engaging for them. But you clearly wear a lot of hats in your role. Uh, what's that been like working in the nonprofit and association world um, as compared to something that's more corporate? I actually love the association world. Uh, we do have, typically have smaller staffs. Uh, when I worked at the corn growers, we never had more than three employees. And oh <laughs> <laughs> there was always a lot that, you know, we had to take care of. So in addition to doing, you know, the communication type things, you know, newsletters and the website and, uh, you know, coming up with educational activities, I was also helping with membership. Um, you know, making sure that we had members and we were communicating well with members. Uh, did a lot of administration type things, working with our board of directors who are all farmers, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that records are being kept appropriately, uh, taking minutes of meetings, planning meetings. So I got to wear a lot of different hats and because I was able to do that, there was really a lot of on the job experience. And I got, I got a, in a point in my career where I felt that I could move into more of a leadership role. And that's when I entertained, uh, you know, the possibility of me becoming the executive director of this uh, nonprofit organization. And I'm able to, you know, use all of those skills uh, that I learned in my, in my previous job. And it, I love being able to, you know, do the different things to, to get the job done. You know, I'm working with um, our different board members. I'm working with all the other organizations within Kentucky agriculture, whether, you know, it's the pork producers or the cattlemen's or the soybean board, uh, the horse council. You know, I have to learn what their needs are for education and then figure out a way that we can best help them accomplish that. And it's great that we're kind of you know one way that all of these different organizations can bring their educational activities and ideas to the school system and to students across Kentucky. And you do a fantastic job. I have thoroughly enjoyed all of the activities that I've been able to do and I know you all have been kind of working overtime to get those resources out to teachers and students and families right now. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about how you all have had to kind of change and adapt during this time? Absolutely. So this kind, this is definitely brought on some some change. Now we were already, you know, providing a lot of our resources and lessons on our website so teachers could download them and use them. But they, we realized they weren't really in a um, in a format that a teacher could easily share with their students online with these non-traditional instruction days. So, you know, learning from the teachers that, you know, we've worked with all along, you know, providing us some, some uh, guidelines on what programs to use, how we need to structure our lessons and our worksheets. We've been really trying to 
pick our favorite lessons and, and do those first. Um, and also trying to figure out what the teachers needed this, this last little bit of school. But I do feel that going forward, we're probably going to try to do more of that um, to you know, prepare for what may come down the road. And we also know that a lot of students, you know, a lot of teachers use digital learning anyway, even in the classroom. So if we can make their job as easy as possible, we are definitely going to do that. And I think accessibility is probably one of the best things that you guys are working on right now. Yes. Um, but you mentioned that, you know, you've been turning some of your favorite lessons into digital ones. What's your favorite lesson or activity that you guys have? My favorite lesson is my Kentucky home provides what I need. And I love that because one, it focuses on our, our state or our Commonwealth and all of the things that make Kentucky unique when it comes to food production. Kentucky is just a great place to live. And I agree. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> We have so many natural resources here in Kentucky. We live in a temperate climate. Now, we're not growing things year round like, you know, they can do in Florida and Texas and California because, you know, we have a, a colder winter, but we have so much water here. We have excellent soil. The diversity across the state is really cool. In the western part of the state, you have flatter ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a different type of soil. So that's where you're going to find most of your grain crops like corn and soybeans and wheat being grown. Um, and then that's where a lot of the, the chickens and the pigs are going to be. It's because they're going to be closer to their food source. Mm -hmm. As you move to the central part of the state where we have more rolling hills and that's where you know, a lot of people think of the bluegrass part of the state where we have such great grass that grows here. That's where you're going to find all of our beef cattle and dairy cattle and horses because of those resources. We grow a lot of hay in Kentucky, and that's really all over the state. Uh, just because of those rolling hills and the soil and the water and the and the weather and then we'll move into eastern Kentucky those those smaller farmers can grow a lot of different things to meet their local customers so they might have vegetables orchards uh, beef cattle goats sheep pigs that are raised outdoors chickens so you'll have a lot of diversity in the eastern part of the state and as more people are interested in having local food, that really provides an opportunity for those smaller farmers. So that's also exciting. Very so that, yeah, that's my favorite lesson just because one, I get to talk about how cool Kentucky is, but all the research that goes into that has, has been really fun. I look at the uh, National Ag Statistics Service data on a regular basis and see how it's changing over time and then get to report on that. So it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. See, I'm, I'm not uh, skilled at research, so that sounds really stressful for me. And that's why we need people like you uh, in your position. And speaking of your position, what advice would you give to students who were interested in pursuing a career similar to yours? Well, I think the number one thing is that business skills are, I would feel, are really important to thrive in most any position. So I learned communications, and I think that was, you know, extremely helpful, being able to communicate well. So I can write for newspaper, press releases, I can lay out uh, different publications. So that has served me very well. And being able to pair that with an industry that I love just made it, you know, much more easy for me to find a job once it was, you know, once I graduated. So, you know, find that industry that you think you will love, learn all about your industry because that's going to set you up to work in a field that you want, but then also get, you know, a lot of business skills, whether that's, you know, accounting or human resources or communications, you know, find the things within um, an industry or business that you feel that, you know, you would be really good at. So then not only do you have the knowledge of, uh, the industry you want to work, but you also have those skills that make you even more valuable. Mm 
if I had to do it again, knowing that I had the, you know, knowing that I would have the job I have today, I probably would have spent even more time with um, accounting and finances, uh, maybe some association management. Those are things that I've, you know, kind of learned uh, being in this position. And I have a lot of great mentors and, and people to work with to, to help me along the way. Uh, so it, it comes, but it definitely would have made it easier stepping into that role from, from day one. So get lots of skill type education and then, you know, find find that industry or, you know, think about the hobbies that you really love. Uh, you'll find a way to get your passion in there and that's going to make your, your job never seem like it's work. Well, that is fantastic advice. Uh, I needed to hear some of that myself as someone that's looking for a job pretty soon. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, one last thing before we're out of time, how can people keep up with all the things that you guys are doing right now? Almost everything that we do, we share on our website. It's teachkyag.org. And you can find all of our programs, all of our resources, all the fun videos that we've been doing. And of course, there's also links to all of our social media channels from our website. Well, I'll make sure that we get those included in our video and in the description so people can seamlessly uh, check out what you guys are doing because I think it's pretty fantastic. Uh, but Jennifer, thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun hearing about all the things that um, have led you to where you are in your life and hearing your advice for our students. You guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing from Jennifer and don't forget, we'll be back next week with another interview uh, in Ag Aspirations. Bye guys.